So, welcome and uh, we are going to talk about uh, probably the most uh, important part of uh, this set of uh, modules on technical writing. Uh, till now, we have been talking about uh, identifying good reading material, identifying what is good about them and trying to get them in your own uh, technical writing. Uh, there are still some tricks uh, that are needed uh, when, you, uh, when you start doing technical writing. So, I am going to talk about some of the tricks that I use and uh, some of the tricks that I have tried and I have not been successful, but I am going to share all of them so that you can find out which tricks work for you. Okay. So, there are uh, two types of uh, writing that you can do when you are trying to uh, write some technical document. One is the top down approach, the other one is bottom up approach. I have found that which approach you use depends largely on your philosophy of writing. If you think that like Bharati for example, that everything should be clear in your mind and that is what you are trying to write on paper, then top down approach works because you already have the structure in your mind. So, you start with the skeleton, you start putting the uh, sections, you start putting the subsections, you start putting the sub subsections you start uh, putting the paragraphs and uh, for each paragraph you write one summary sentence or topical sentence and uh, then you go on adding more and more information to these different sections and that is how you build up the document. Now, like I said it is very difficult for me to do because when I am starting my writing it is not clear to me as to how the information should flow. In fact, it is not even clear to me what is the information that I am trying to communicate. For a long time, I had this problem because you go to a, a journal, you read papers, it is all structured very nicely. They start with an introduction, they tell you what is the problem that people are trying to solve and they tell you how they have thought about a method of solving it and how they have solved it and how they have got the results. So, when you read the scientific literature, you might get this idea that this is how people do science itself, that they think about a particular problem and then they identify a particular methodology of solution and then they do it, they get the solution and they publish it. Uh, but later as you will see, uh, you, you will realize that this is not so, this is not how it happens and that is where the bottom up approach or writing as a rigorous thinking approach comes very handy. What I have found is that when you start writing, you should write everything that comes to your mind, everything that is related to the problem at hand. And once you have almost all the information that you have put on paper, you can try to move around the information. You can try to see what is it that is emerging from this information that you have. In this way, when you do, you, you have all information and you know cutting, pasting and moving around things are so easy nowadays that this is another equally good and uh, at times very easy way of uh, writing technical material. So, top down approach uh, like I said starts with writing section titles, subsection titles, sub subsection titles and paragraphs and for each paragraph you write one line that line is either the topical sentence or that is the first sentence in that paragraph or a summary sentence that is the last sentence of that paragraph. It basically communicate what is it to be told in that particular paragraph in greater detail and then it is built on this. So, if you believe in this methodology, uh, for example, you might ask your students to prepare a report, then when you ask them to prepare a report, you should tell them that give me this skeleton and then at this level you decide if you want to do any reorganization and then the report is built on that. Uh, but like I said that the thing that works for me is a bottom approach where write everything that comes to your mind and write it indiscriminately and uh, then you edit and move around passages and modify and you never delete anything till the document uh, is uh, completely shaped up. The advantage with this method is that there is no writer's block, you do not have to think that you know how do I start this paper or how do I introduce this section or which information comes after what, you do not have to worry about any of that when you start writing because of which the writing process itself becomes much more smooth, you, you sit down and you start writing. Okay. Now, 
there is also a particular writing order that works very well for me and that order is as follows. You should write whatever it is that you have done first, those could be your experimental details, those could be details of your simulation, that could be the program that you wrote, that could be the software that you developed, whatever it is that you have done yourself, you should write first. Uh, primarily because this is probably the last section that somebody would read. That does not mean that you will be sloppy with this writing. Uh, you should still do a wonderful job of writing this section because this is what helps others take off from where you have left. But it is far more easier to write this section in a clear manner because it is what you have been working on for whatever time that you have been working on the problem because of which it is far more easier to get it uh, in, in a much more neater fashion and uh, it is also uh, the place where you do not need too much of uh, information from other sources because this is what you have done. So, it is easier for you to put it down on paper. So, this is what you should first write. Then you should write the results. What is it that you obtained using these experiments or simulation or code or software? That is what you write next. From these results, you have done something, you got something based on that you have to conclude. So, the conclusion is what you have to write next, that is the third thing that you write. Once you have written the conclusion, you have to go back and now write the introduction. Okay? So, this is where the trick of writing comes, so, this is why every paper looks so neat. Now that you know what the conclusion is, you are going to build a story around that conclusion. You are going to give an introduction which basically tells people as to why this is the problem and why the approach you took is the approach to solve that particular problem. So, basically we are looking at the solution and then we are going to ask the corresponding right question and that is happening in the introduction session. Then you should write the abstracts which is the last one which basically tells the full story. Now that the complete picture is clear in your mind, because remember telling a story always means that you know the full story. So, unless you know the full story, you do not know how to put it across and where to emphasize. So, once you know the full story, you can write the abstract and then you should write the title for your paper. This order is also reverse to what you would do if you are reading the paper. The first thing you would read is the title, then you will read the abstract, then if the abstract is interesting you will go read the conclusions so that you can understand the conclusions in a much more uh, detail and uh, if the conclusion is very convincing then you will try to read uh, the introduction or results uh, depending on what you want to understand whether you want to understand the setting in which these results are presented or uh, the details of what the results are that are presented. Only very few people are going to read the details of your experiments or simulation, but you should pay lots of attention to their work because they are the ones who are going to take this work forward. So, that will be read lost and that is why we are writing it first. So, so this is a nice way of writing things. Uh, which gives a much better coherency and cogency to the technical document. It puts things in the right order when the paper is finally written, even though it, the paper itself is not written in that particular order. So, in technical writing, we should always tell a story. Telling a story means telling what to expect and why. Okay. Most of the times, we also meet the expectations. But what is better is sometimes not meeting the expectations, you know that gives a surprise factor to the readers which makes them more involved in the writing or hooked to the writing. And on top of it, if you can explain why the expectations are not fulfilled, then what is the significance of that, then people get more involved with the writing and get more pleasure or benefit out of the material by reading this information. Okay. So, you can go back to Raman and Krishnan's way of announcing uh, the discovery or Einstein's way of setting his hypothesis out and you will see that they follow all these uh, norms. Basically, they tell the story because they start with the background and they tell what to expect and they tell why and then 
in both those cases they actually meet the expectations and sometimes it can be that you do not meet the expectation then it becomes another story within a story as to why the expectation is not met and what is it that it is communicating. So, that is why it becomes very important. So, now there are also certain tricks or techniques that one should use when one is writing technical material. The first one is not to tell, but to show okay. instead of writing one paragraph about what a particular experimental result is all about. If you can plot the relevant quantities and it shows a clear trend, so that the reader can understand okay, if the temperature increases or pressure increases this is what happens to this particular property, then that is a much better way of communicating the same information. So, you should replace as much of text as possible by figures, plots and tables, so that people can read information in one go and they can read it in a fashion in which they can appreciate it better. Technical writing is also writing where you have to be quantitative. Prose without numbers sound very fluffy and without substance. I have seen many times students writing that uh, this is a process which is widely used in the industry, which becomes uh, more or less meaningless because widely could be interpreted to be anything. It could be widely used because 30 percent of industry uses and all the other methods are all 1 or 2 percent. It could also be widely because 98 percent of the industry uses only this method. So, this significance of what it means to say that it is widely used is missing if you do not give numbers. So, wherever possible you should always give numbers, but when you give numbers you should also be careful with the numbers. You should put error bars in your plots, you should know the limitations of the numbers that you are giving and you should not report any number beyond the allowed accuracy for that calculation or for that experiment. So, these are things that are expected in a technical document that there are lots of figures, plots, tables and the information is quantitative, it is not just descriptive and the quantification of the information also comes with qualification. It increases, but plus or minus this much is the error in this number that we are getting. So, that kind of information should be given. Okay. You should also remember this is a very very important point. So, we will actually have a tutorial for this that all stories change with audience. Okay. You might have the same story, but you will not tell it the same way to all audience. Okay. You should know your audience. What you write for example, in your annual progress seminar report, which will be read by your advisor and the few faculty members from your department or nearby department is very different from a conference proceedings paper that you would write, where you are trying to reach to more people who are working in your area and you are trying to communicate something to them. That will be completely different from a journal paper, which is meant for still broader audience. Okay. Now, you might also decide to write a popular article based on this for a newspaper or your in-house magazine or somewhere else. Uh, then uh, that will be completely different. So, in terms of the audience, you know, the, I have arranged them in the order of increasing uh, number of people, but with the decreasing amount of technical expertise. Okay. The annual progress seminar report can be extremely technical, uh, but uh, and, and all the nitty gritty information and, and also the, the purpose of the writings are different. Annual progress seminar is to tell your advisor and other people as to how you think about things, but in conference proceedings paper it will be the uh, idea that you have which will be given emphasis, whereas in a journal paper what results you obtained and what is their significance will get much more of an emphasis and probably in popular writing uh, it is the applications of what you have done which will get the maximum emphasis. Okay. So, so the, the stories it might be the same information, but depending on audience it should be communicated differently and that is a very good exercise to, to do for, for you to develop your technical writing skills. So, we will have a couple of tutorials based on this information. Okay. Thank you.